Hey everybody, I hope everybody's doing well. We are now down to the final segment of our production and planning series. And we're now going to refine all the work that we've done and we're gonna take a look at our profitability for each product. This is so important to analyze this, especially when you're, you know, you're producing and selling a number of SKUs or lots of different products. You wanna see where your profitability lies. Um, if you have certain products that maybe you're not making as much uh, profit on as you thought you were, or possibly even losing money on, um, you may want to refine um, some uh, elements of that or stop doing it altogether, stop producing it altogether. Okay. So in our last um, tutorial, we had developed a pro forma statement or a plan, a budget, if you will. So important. So we were able to determine here uh, our total sales that we had forecasted we had calculated our direct materials and labor to get our standard costs or cost of goods sold, and which is also referred to as variable costs, and we had our fixed costs. So of that, we were able to determine, determine our planned net income or our EBITDA, our earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. Again, it's so important so that as we go through each month, we can pull off our actual uh, results, financial results, and we compare it against our plans. Did we meet our targets? Did we hit our goals? Did we did we you know do much better in certain areas that we had planned? <clears throat> did we not do so well in certain areas? And if we didn't, why? We can take a look at that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now we're going to take all this information that we've calculated up here at the top, and that is automatically built for you in the financial results by product up here. So now we're going to drill this down a little bit further as we've been doing, as we've been going through this entire process to really zone in now on our different products to take a look at what our profitability is. So first thing we need to do is we need to determine and calculate our sales for our first project widget A. Right? So to do that, we're simply gonna take our total sales in February, the 95,317 that we can find in E6. So E6, and we're gonna multiply that by our weighting factor that we've been using all the way through this entire process. For widget A, it's 45%, and we can find that result in cell D14. And, oops, what happened here? D4, we don't want that. D14, there we go. Again, you'll notice I made an absolute cell reference to D14. There's a dollar sign in front and after the, uh, the column D. Um, if you've got a sh keyboard shortcut, you can hit an F4 and that will do that for you automatically. Once again, we do this so that it locks uh, on that cell when we drag the formula across. We don't want that uh, reference moving from that value. So we'll grab our fill handle, drag it across. And I always like to check the last cell just to make sure that my formula is copying <coughs> correctly. So I take a look up at my formula bar and yep, I've got J6 times E14. So that works out. Now we simply, we're gonna use the same process, but now we're gonna determine what the total direct materials and direct labor costs were for widget A. The only tricky part to this is to make sure that you don't accidentally make an incorrect cell reference by you know, hitting a, uh, an incorrect row here. So for example, we can see direct materials is on row eight. So we wanna make sure that we're using that row as our reference number in our formula and our direct labor is on row nine. This is so important, not only just working through this exercise, but also with your assignment or any data that you may be working on. And of course, the more data that you're working with, the more opportunities there are to make a mistake, believe me. So we really wanna be mindful of that. All right, so our formula then will be equal to E8, that's our direct materials in February of 6586, times our weighting factor in D14. 45%, we'll hit tab, gives us 2963.48. Grab that fill handle and we'll drag it across. Whoop, here we go. Check July again. Yep, J8 times D14. And now our direct labor costs for product A. Once again, our direct labor falls across row nine. We can see that right here equals E9 times our weighting factor and D14, there we go, 4,055, and we'll drag that across, check July, 
59, 14. Great. Okay, so now lastly, what we need to do is we just need to determine our total standard cost or our total variable cost, same thing. And that's just the sum of our total materials and our total labor, okay? So for February, for widget A, that's simply going to be the values in E16 of total materials plus our total labor, which is in cell E17. And we get for February, uh, widget A, 7,019. So let's pull that across. And now we can determine what our contribution margin is, okay, on the product, widget A, which is simply sales minus cost. Now, I do want to caution you on one thing because I've seen people make this mistake before. Make sure when you're putting your formula in for this, you're not taking the total sales of the month uh, less the total product cost because then you're going to overstate your profitability. We're dealing with the product sales and the product costs only to determine the profitability on the product itself. So for example here, our total sales, uh, plan sales rather for widget A is 42,892. And the total cost to make that product in February is 7,019. So our formula then is simply going to be uh, E15, our product sales for widget A minus our total cost for widget A, which is in E18, there we go. So we got a profitability there of 35,874. And we can drag that right across. And let's just check July again. So we've got J, the results in J15, which is right here. That is our planned sales for widget A in July is 40,844. And our planned cost of material and labor is $6,684 leads us a contribution margin for widget A in July of 34,161. Okay, I'm gonna stop the, um, the video here and we'll continue on another segment and we'll finish up uh, for products B and C and then we'll take a look at the total. We wanna make sure that everything balances so that we've correctly done our allocations. So we will see you soon.